How's it going, PD team? Welcome to the Get More Control series. Today, we'll be learning how to expand the capabilities of the new particle emitter by adding a few features. What we'll learn is how to calculate the emitter's velocity and generate particles based off that speed. Grab an espresso because this is going to require a little bit of espresso programming. This is a quick video, so let's dive in. Okay, so here's the example that I created for you. Basically, if we take a look, here's our normal standard properties for the emitter. What we're going to be adding is this new tab where we can say the particle amount so we're overriding so you can see the emission rate is changing and we're driving this through espresso so the tab we're going to be opening is called the additional controls and we can set the particle amount of the max speed and then we've got an animation curve so the emission is based off of this curve and you'll notice i clamped it just a little bit ahead so that we're not getting particles at like the speed of like two or three so it actually starts moving a little bit more and then we have this you know parabolic curve also we can change the speed of the particles based off of this speed emitter. So if I put this to 200 or 300, it becomes very obvious in the ones when it slows down, you can see don't move as much. Let's build this thing. Okay, so here I am in a blank scene. We're gonna go ahead and go to simulate emitters, basic emitter. I'm going to change it to a sphere. You can select whatever one you'd like. I'll set it to 20 by 20 by 20. So it's a small emitter. And we're going to be overriding this rate amount based off of the speed. We're going to go ahead and also do the velocity. So the speed of this. So to do that, we need to first add the espresso control. So we're going to right click. We're going to go to programming, espresso. And I've docked the espresso tab to my viewport. So it just takes over the whole screen. So I'll flip between these two. And the way you do that, I'll undock it just to show you. So when you load up an espresso, you can double click it, brings up this window. And then I just took the hamburger button and dragged it right onto the espresso editor viewport. So we're going to take our emitter and the properties that we want to override are the emission rate. And we're doing it on the input, not the output. This is output. We'll do it on the input. So we've got rate and we've also got speed. So I'm going to take the properties for the speed and just bring it down to zero. That's what we want. I'm also going to change the color and I'm going to expand the timeline to something like 500. In our Expresso, we want to set up a control. So what we'll do is we'll come into the emitter and we'll go to emission and copy this. So go to user interface, copy user interface, go to our emitter here and just paste user interface. I'm going to add a group, call it additional controls, drag our rate into here. And we'll start off with this one first. Default value will set to just an even 100 and our max slider value will put to 10,000 for now. And I'm not going to do the max slider amount. I'm going to change it from integer to integer slider. So we get a slider, but we can set our own max value. So we're not limited. Okay, then I'm going to take my emitter and drag it in because the properties are on the actual emitter, the controls. We'll go to additional controls and we'll drag the rate in. This one here, we're going to put up because this is going to be our controls. We want to calculate the emitter's velocity. So as it moves, it, it'll generate a value. And this is super easy. All you do is you drag in your emitter and one of the properties in it, if we go down here, you'll see there's position velocity. So it's already ready to go for us. We don't need to do any fancy footwork. We want to basically remap these values into something that we can use for the rate and the speed. So to do that, you probably guessed it. We're going to use a calculate range mapper. We'll adjust it here. So we're going to take our velocity, plug it into the input, and our output is going to go into the rate. And our clamp input values, I'm going to just set to a number, but I want to know how fast this thing's moving. So I already know if I move it a considerable distance on the screen, it goes about a thousand units. So I'm going to put a thousand here. And what you can do is you can animate your emitter, throw a result in here to figure out your speed. So we can just take this, plug it in, and then take our calculate and say start espresso calculation. And we'll just move our object from here. I'll do negative 350. And then I'll go to let's say frame 30 and do positive 350. And I'm going to go to my curve editor and drag these so we get more extreme angles. And I'm going to hold control and that will clamp it horizontally so we get more extreme animation. So if I come in here and let it play, it does that. So we're done with our animation. Go back to our espresso and we want to output a value. Well, that value that we want to put on the output, we can set to a, a thousand, let's say. So at its highest speed, it's going to put out a thousand particles and you can see there it goes. And then once it stops, so I'm going to add a little bit of velocity to it. So I'll put it to 50. So it's very obvious and you can see it stops producing when it stops. So it's working. So we'll come in here and we want to control this output value. So I'm going to drag the output. Sometimes it doesn't allow you. So we'll just say output upper and the output upper is going to be the rate that we added in here from our controller. So if we come in here, this guy right here is calculating and sending this here is the same as this and it's throwing it into the output upper. So if I go back and hit play, 
you can see we have less. Now I'm gonna undock the Espresso Editor. And what you can do, you need to have the Espresso Editor visible. I'll put it down here. Pay attention to the result. So it went up to 1100, it looks like. Almost 2000. So we can set this range mapper to 2000. And then you'll get more accurate. There we go. And then we can just take our rate amount and set it to like a thousand. There we go. Now, one feature that I wanna add is this range mapper. I wanna be able to add this curve in here. So I'm gonna copy the spline here, user interface, copy user interface, go to my additional controls, paste user interface. Velocity curve, hit tab, and then hit okay. And now you can see we have a curve here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click spline presets linear, and then I want this point to be soft, which gives me a handle. And then I can drag this across here, take this handle, drag it down and then I like bringing this value just a little bit right before the grid line like halfway that means if it's barely moving it's not producing any particles and so if you want it to only produce particles when it's moving ultra fast you just drag this value in I'm going to take this range mapper duplicate it this one's going to be for our speed the property from the range mapper user interface copy user interface paste user interface speed amount. We want it to be 0 to 10,000. Change it to float slider and our default will just say 100 units. Now we've got the emitter here. We can go here. We drag in our speed amount into our controller and then drag it into the upper output and we'll take velocity speed, plug that in. So the speed is driving now the speed amount of the particles. And there's all other properties you can you can generate, like you can generate color based off of it, off the speed. So we know the speed amount is driving the range mapper for speed. So the faster it moves, the faster the particles will be generated. We can also add in the particle group. Now this doesn't require Expresso, but what we can do is we can add under simulate, color mapper. I'm gonna hold shift because I wanna nest it in the particle group. I'm gonna get rid of this, make this one white. Make this my nice blue. I'm gonna invert this, drag this up, drag this over a little bit. And I've already played with this. So we know our we want to do velocity and we wanna pick magnitude. So this will calculate all three. And then we can set our maximum of 100 because our emitter speed is set to 100. And what we can do is we can link this. So whatever we put here, we'll also control this value. So let's do that. So I'll come in here to our color mapper. I'll drag it in. So our color mapper, we're gonna drag the upper in here and then take the speed amount and just link it. So you can see right at the highest speed, they turn white. Now I like the properties for lifetime. We can set the amount to like 25. So they die off. They're not just flying around for too long. So there you go. So the faster they go, they change color to blue and then to white. And what's really cool is you can take your, your basic emitter delete the track and to do this next step you have to go do control d or command d and go to your sub steps on your particle tab under simulation set this to 20 so you get more sub steps and then we can take and drag this around to emit particles so you can see when they stop the emitter stops we're not producing particles it's not perfect in the viewport but if you want, what you can do is you can record the position using, I think it's coffee or something like that. You can record your movement so you can do this around a logo. That's it for this tutorial. I hope it gives you some ideas of other properties you can expand using velocity. That's it. I hope you found it useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.